Good morning, you crazy fuckers. I was just thinking when I woke up. I know for a fact the people that are following me, if they subscribe, they're fucking crazy, just like me. I already know it. It's going to be fun meeting all of you. It is. I can, uh, I can imagine it. Some of the characters I see on the internet, yeah. And, and me? Huh. Yeah, I can only imagine the stuff that we get into. I gotta stay away from some of y'all, that's for sure. Fucking yesterday, dude, it riding in the wind sucks. It sucks. It took me, it took me almost three hours to ride my normal routine. It only takes me about an hour and a half. It took me twice the time because of the wind. It was, man, I got out of uh, donating yesterday and the wind was whipping like crazy. And it sucked because I was already cold because the, you know, those donation places, they keep them cold for a reason, you know, it keeps, you know, if infections down and stuff, you know, and, uh, you know, from spreading stuff, and I get out, I'm glad I brought a hoodie, but I get out, it's fucking windy, whipping like crazy, I have short time like a dumbass, but it was nice out, you know, before I got into the plasma place, so, and it said it was going to be nice all day, but it didn't say that it was going to be windy. But I didn't look, I didn't actually look at like the details, I just clicked on the thing, you know, and then read the temperature. I never really click on the details, so. Um, that was an experience for today that I need to start, I need to start looking at the wind, the details and stuff. Which I've already known, because I'm going to be sailing, you know. Um, yesterday would have been a great day for sailing last night. Um, that wind was whipping, bro. It was good. I would have. I would have got. I would have been able to cover some ground yesterday, um, if I was sailing for sure. It would have been nice. And last night too, I would have been able to sail last night. It was. Uh, I got up for a minute, and uh, looked outside and stuff. Stayed up for a minute, but I was so beat from riding in the wind. I just went back to bed. Plus, I knew I got a lot to do today. That's why I didn't make a video last night, man. I just. Couldn't do it. I'm in the shower, I wasn't even in the shower long. I just rinsed off and I didn't even like stretch, man. I just fucking rinsed off and hopped in the shower. Went right to bed. Made dinner, went right to bed. It made some noodles, that was it. I haven't even been out of bed yet. I'm still in bed. moved at all. I don't know what to do. Oh, let's see. You gotta get one of these for your bed, man. Perfect night light. Go to Harbor Freight. I'm serious. Go to Harbor Freight and get one of these uh, LED lights and then just get like a little, you know, those uh, 3M adhesive double sticky pads and put it right here. And then you can charge it and then, you know, you turn, I use it for reading a lot. Like late at night, I'll have that on and I'll be reading right here. It works better than the uh, lamp. It does. It's way brighter. And then you can move it. It's also uh, good for uh, when the women are in bed. Yeah, real good. Let me tell you, can't wait for Margarita to come back. She hasn't been in this bed yet. No one's been in this bed yet. This is a brand new bed. Brand spanking new, man. Listen, brand spanking new. It's a brand new Serta. I mean, Beauty Rest. It's not a Serta, it's a Beauty Rest. I was looking at a Serta. I got a Beauty Rest hybrid, man. Best of the best, dude. You can't get any better. You can't. The only other bed that I've seen that was, like, that might have topped this 
was the was the duty rest ones that that move, you know what I mean? That like lift up, like the back right here, I could push a button and it'd be like, like that. Those were nice. But those were also another two, three grand just for the just for the bottom piece, you know? And I got the I got the wood. I bought this because it matched my great grandma's dresser. That's my great grandma's dresser. That dresser is old as hell. It's almost, it's going on almost 300 years old. <laughs> it's old. It's from the 1800s, late 1800s. It'd be going on 300 soon, man. I'm serious. Yeah, 19 on, well, 200, I mean. She said, dude, listen, my grandma told me it was my great grandma's, and my great grandma had it in the 1800s. So. That's crazy to think about. That's what my grandma told me. I don't know. You can tell it's old, man. Like, you look at it, you can see it's old. You open up all the drawers. It's old wood. That top piece um, is cracked on the left. You can see that, like, it has, like, the old-style nails in it. Um, that window, that, that mirror, it's the original mirror, the vanity mirror that goes to it, which was crazy as I lost that mirror, actually. Um, years ago, like a decade ago, um, I ended up moving in with my brother and the room that I had upstairs had like a ceiling that was kind of curved on an angle like that. That dresser wouldn't fit in that room with that mirror the way the uh, wall was. And my bed, it, the room was small. I hated that room. It was the, I didn't even want to live there. But, you know... My dad and my brother, and we all were kind of chipping in, you know, to live in the, in the same place. Um, so what happened was, is that mirror, I took the mirror off, and I uh, let my brother's wife, my sister, um, use it. And uh, she would do her makeup in, it, in the room, you know. She set it on the floor up against the wall, and she would do her makeup. Well, I ended up moving out. And uh, forgot about the mirror, you know. I moved out, grabbed the uh, dresser, and I put it in the storage unit, you know. And um, years went by. I'm telling you, years went by. Like, seven years went by, eight years, I swear. Like, that, that dresser was in the storage unit for a long time. Um, and I pulled it out uh, a while ago. And um, I was like, what the fuck? Where's the mirror at, man? I'm like... What did I do with the mirror, you know? And I couldn't remember who I gave it to. I knew I gave it to somebody. Like, I remember, like, saying to somebody, here, you can use this mirror, you know? Um, I ended up calling my brother. And uh, it was funny because I, was, I wasn't even, uh, I wasn't even, like, I didn't call to bring up the mirror at all. I was just talking to my brother's wife about something and she brought up somehow we brought up the mirror we were talking about the dresser or whatever somehow the dresser got brought up and uh i told her i, I don't know where the mirror is at you know i couldn't find the mirror and it hit her it slapped her like in the face like i watched her like because she was just like looking at the dresser you know and then she whipped her head around and she was like i know where it's at I'm like, what do you mean you know where it's at? She's like, she was like, uh, what's his name? I know his name. Um, she was like, you know, I forget the guy's name, but she told me his girlfriend has it. I'm like, no way. Really? I'm like, dude, if that thing is still, if that thing is still in, like, in one piece, I'm going to be blown away. And sure as shit, man, she called that girl. And that girl did not want to come up off that mirror, man. That was her mirror. She loved that mirror, bro. Like, she had it in her room and everything. Like, it was all, like, on her dresser and, like, had, like, all her stuff around it and everything. I felt terrible. And uh, I was like, man, I really need that mirror, though. Like, that's my great-grandma's. Like, I didn't give that away, you know what I mean? I, I let my sister use it, you know, and she gave it away not really realizing it, you know? Dude, that lady, it took a whole week to get that thing.
I got her from her though. Cost a hundred bucks. I got it. It's there. So I'm happy, you know, and it's got uh, margaritas when we went to Silver Lake, and I proposed to her, and you know, um, the first beer I got from her that she, you know when she came over here, she was homesick, man. Especially with that family and the way they were. Um, she loves Victoria beer. That's her favorite beer. And that's the beer that they have in Mexico. And it's hard to find here in Michigan. It's not hard to find. They just don't carry it at a bunch of places. They, You know, they carry it. It's just, you know, you got to drive to five, ten different places to find it, you know. Um, you can call, but a lot of times they say they have it. They don't. Um, so... There's only two places that I know of that carry it, that are around me, and they're in Farmington. They're not even, you know, in the hood, or they're in the really expensive area, so. Um, yeah, I got that for her, and, you know, I put the stickers up there. And so that's going in the storage unit, and the bed's going in the storage unit, you know. So I got her. She loves... She loves, like, uh, handmade jewelry and stuff, so I got her this. I leave it on the bed for her. So. No one else sleeps in this bed. No one, just me. This is... No one will ever be in this bed other than Margarita. And I put this here for her. So it's like she's sleeping in the bed, you know? And then she, she left me her Hello Kitty. I sleep with her Hello Kitty every night. I try, I, I literally hug it, but I don't want to get her dirty, man. I started getting her dirty, so I, I put her back in the corner. <laughs> oh, I got to get up. I don't want to move. I don't. Oh, yeah, I'm sore. Listen, that wind fucked me up. I did not want to do anything when I got back. I didn't even, listen, I, I didn't even want to make food. I I barely ate. I ate one bowl of food and that was it. I couldn't, I had to get in bed, man. I was exhausted. Plus it doesn't help when they take that plasma from you. They, they're taking all that good stuff, the energy, you know? Uh, time to get up. Time to get up. I did read last night in the Bible, so you know, I just didn't do a video. I always read. That's mandatory. I can't. Listen, I read. Even if I'm beat or tired, even if the evil one and I'm lazy, you know, is telling me not to read it, because he will. He'll keep you out of that Bible. Every time you go to read it, he'll tell you, oh, just wait, just wait. That's what he'll do. You don't have to read it. You don't have to read it. That's what he does. He does it every time, man. It never fails. Every time I try to help somebody or, or do something I know is good, he's always there, man. He's always there telling me not to do it. Like traveling, right, chasing my dreams. He's always in my head, man, trying to fucking... Keep me from doing what it is I want to do. I'm going, man. I'm, I'm Listen, I'm going. He ain't stopping me. I got Jesus, man. Jesus is in my life. I, I claim I, I, I claim his name every day. Listen, as soon as I woke up this morning, it's the first thing I said is, thank you, Jesus. Listen, he's real, man. I, listen, I do all that meditating shit. Listen, man, look at me, man. Look, bro. Listen, I do the meditating. I work out every day. Only, the only day I don't work out is Saturday, but I still move. You have to. You have to. You can't, you can't do it no other way. There is no other way to live correctly. It's the only way God has given us to live the correct way. You have to live it that way. If you want to go to the heavens... Which there's more than one heaven, so you know. There's multiple heavens. The Bible clearly says it. Jesus even said that there was multiple heavens. He said 
He said there's multiple there's multiple rooms in the mansion. There's in the mansions. There's mansions. There's there's rooms. There's not just one mansion. There's mansions. There's he said there's there's everybody has their own hotel room, their own mansion inside the mansion. That's what he said. And if you look, if you look at Revelations, and you see the new Jerusalem that God is going to make for us, the new world, it says, it even says the size of the building that we're going to be building for him. The size, the building is so big that the, 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 the base of it is as big as the world. It's insane. I need something to drink. Bad. Yeah, really bad. <laughs> but uh oh I wanted to read this before I go do anything so I was reading Job last night you know cause Job a lot of people man don't know what Job went through man um, you know Job Job lost his Job had a lot of daughters man a big family he lost it all you know his, his, his whole family got taken from him you know and all of his cattle and his house and, you know, he had boils on his face, you know what I mean? He was, you know, he he was getting hit with all these different uh, medical plagues, you know, medical conditions and stuff. And uh, he was fucked up and he was taking it out on God. He, you know, he was, because he was such a God-worshipping person, you know, and and for, for something that bad to happen to him, he, in his head, you know, he was like, how could God let this happen to me, you know, um, this is bullshit, you know, like, all the things I do, I worship you, Lord, and, you know, I've, I've done nothing but, um, do everything that, you know, I was taught, you know, by the sacred family, you know, you know, passed down, you know, like, how it was supposed to be passed down, and, uh, you know, God allows things to happen for a reason. Um, you know, you got to remember that we didn't make that choice. We didn't make that conscious choice to, to sin originally. Adam and Eve did. So, therefore, we, you know, we're, we're, we're stuck with a guilty conscience we're born with a guilty conscience, which was given to us, which God already knew that. That's why it's called grace, because God already knew that this had to happen, you know, um, for us to be to be alive, you know, in order for light and in, in order for 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 us to have light, we must have darkness. Um, and that's fact, you know, um, we sleep, you know, we got to hibernate at night, you know what I mean? Or, or the way our bodies work and stuff, it, it, it's, that's the truth. Um, and that's what I'm going to be, um, I'm, I'm, I'm really investigating scientifically. Um, God has something that he showed me, um, you know, with my, my computer background and my electronic background and stuff. Um, in my math background and science background, um, all those things, um, I was able to um, figure something out that that that's amazing. Um, so that's why I started writing my book, you know. Um, and I believe, you know, God. I don't believe that it's something I did. Um, I believe that. God created me for a reason, um, as everyone else that, you know, all these dreams of mine and goals, you know, are instilled in my heart for a reason. Um, you know, God instilled them there. So, um, that's what I believe. As I make these videos, um, and I start doing real videos, you know, like editing them and, um, making, you know, half hour videos of each Bible story, which I will be doing. Um, I'm going to start from chapter one. I'm going to go through each chapter all the way through the Bible. Um, I already started. 
So um, these talks that I do are not going to be like that. They're not going to be in series, you know. They're just going to be random because that's how I talk to the Lord um, is through cards. Um, well, I talk to him every day, all day. But when it comes to the Bible um, and reading randomly, I talk to him through the cards. Because, you know, I, I, uh, I've been studying tarot cards as well. Um, I would love to get a hand get my hands on the original 22 cards, um, you know, uh, Hebrew tarot cards, um, tarot deck, um, which they used back then, by the way. Um, Sears used to use them all the time, um, you know, because 22 is a mathematical number. And, you know, a lot of people also don't know is people count by 12s, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, you know, and they count their toes. Well, the Hebrews didn't do that. They counted in 8s, man. Some people say they counted in 10, but I don't believe they did. I don't. I believe they counted here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And I believe they counted in 8s. I believe they counted in fours and eights, um, which that's what I have been studying. Um, you know, people, there's all these different theories online, but um, the more I've been doing the research and stuff and doing all these uh, algebra things, you know, for full sale and for for computer programming and developing, um, you know, new theoretical stuff that I have been um, really pushing for um, which is, you know, on my Linux machine, which is really nice. Um, which, you know, I've been sharing a lot of this information over my Facebook, you know. I have been doing this for a long time now. It's It's been going, it, listen, it'll be going on a year soon that I started this. Um, you know, and I've been sharing all my scientific um, knowledge that I have learned in, about Jesus and everything in hashtags. On my timeline, you know, I'm writing whole, listen, I'm writing whole pages sometimes, man, on, on that timeline. This is why, this is why my Facebook's different than everyone's. That's why I said I'm the one that started that. Um, maybe other people have done it around the world. I'm sure there have. Um, everybody knows the hashtag for the most part, um, knows what hashtag is, but they don't know. They don't know the, the background of it. They don't know the system and how it works. Um, I do. So um, that was the main reason why I started using it, though, um, was, you know, to get a following. Um, you know, I don't have money to publish a book right this second. I mean, I do now, but I don't because that money's for the boat. And, uh, you know, so... Right, plus, I wanted a following. I wanted to influence. You know, God told me, you know, you're traveling. You're, you're moving. He he told me this. I didn't. This is my dream. My dream was to stay on the boat. My dream wasn't to, to, to ride down the Appalachian Trail and travel the country, um, you know, on bike and meet people and just, you know, out of whim and, and randomly just sleep in other people's homes on their couch and, you know, and, and go wherever the Lord pushes me and whatever family, friends, you know, people take me in, they take me in. Um, that's what it's going to be like. Um, that's what I'm about to be living. That's how I'm about to live right now. Um, I have the money to do it, to support myself. Um, the boat, it's really the boat money, but, you know, in, in an emergency, you know, I will touch it if I have to. Um, in emergency situations. Um, but I have not since I've Made that money, earned that money hard. Listen, I, that money is hard work, man. I almost killed myself working at Ferris for that money. It's a lot of work. Plus the cars and everything else. And But, um, so I wanted to read this first. Usually, you know, I do the cards for you guys. So, you know, I, I shuffled. I'll do a card, but I wanted to read this because... This, this, uh, you know, I was reading Job, and Job, you know, I told you that he was yelling at God, like, you know, bitching at him, you know, saying, why did you do this to me? You know, why would you, why would you allow this, you know, why would you allow any of this, you know? And I've always had that question, why would God allow, if God was real, right, which he is, if God was so good, why would he allow this pain, you know? Um... And, and Job said that to him. Job clearly, like, 
said that to him. And I'm going to read you what God said to him. God, God confronted him. Listen, God only spoke to a few people, and God, God spoke to Job. That's what God said. So it says, have you gotten to the bottom of things? So basically, he's already asking Job, like, have you figured it out yet? Are you going to keep on running your mouth and, and, and blaming me for your problems? Or are you you figured it out yet? No one can figure it out. No one. There's no one. And even me. I can't figure it out. I've been asking him for it every day. And I know I need help. There's not. I can't just figure it out myself. You know, there's not just one person I've written in this book. You know, there's multiple people. Um, that's why I'm starting my organization. That's why I'm starting my website. Um, I'm going to be rolling out these programs and stuff for people that, that, that want to help me um, study the Bible and study these numbers and come together and, and, and figure it out, whatever it is that God is, is pushing us to do. Because if, the, if, they're, if they're clicking up with me wanting to study, that means God is telling them that they should be studying this too, which therefore means that he isn't just telling me, he's telling a lot of people, which means that he, there's something really happening. You know what I'm saying? So it says, oh, have you forgotten? It says, have you gotten to the bottom of things? It says, now, and now, finally, God answered Job from the eye of a violent storm. So it's saying that Job, you know, as Job was out in the wilderness, you know, and he was yelling, screaming at God, and God said to him, God confronted him, said this in a voice in the storm. And listen, I have had an experience recently. I have had an experience recently with my little brother. He's doing that dumb shit, that dope, that fake dope. He's dying. All my little brothers are. Their arms are rotting off their, their body. It's fucked me up. I was screaming, yelling at him. I told him I'd kill him. I told him I'd kill him myself. That I'd rather him be dead, kill him out of love. Listen to me, what I just said. I told him I'd rather kill him out of love than to have him go over there to these fucking stupid ass fucking drug dealers. These fucking niggers. Yeah, they're niggers. They're not black people. They're not, they're not real people. They're evil. Those are niggers. We're white people. We can be niggers too. Listen. That name was taken from the black guy uses the word nigger for a reason. They took that word from us. They took that word from everyone else. That was smart. That was the best thing they could have ever done. Because now that word, if we say it, it shouldn't even be offensive. That's why the black people say that word all the time now. Because they took the word from the people that were using it. It was the smartest thing they ever did. That's why I'm allowed to say nigger. And you know what? A person that fucking fucks people over and a person that fucking kills people like that is a nigger. First of all, if you read the dictionary, a nigger, the name nigger wasn't given to a black person because they were black. That fucking word was given to that person because they were ignorant. Not because they were black. White people were called niggers too back in the day. Just so you know. 1700s, 1600s, 1800s. If you were ignorant, you were called a nigger. Listen, American society is fucking twacked out. They need to go to school. They need to learn. They need to study. Stop running your fucking mouth until you study and you learn something. Stop it. Or I'm going to stop it for you. Come to my house. I will gladly stop it for you. I know how to use these. I know how to do this. And I know how to use a gun. I don't use any of those. I use this. It's called the Bible. It's the most effective weapon in the world, period. It is, and I'm angry right now. I'm dropping shit. Because I'm tired of seeing the ignorance. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of seeing everybody at each other's throats. 
Listen, man, I've seen my family rip itself apart time and time again over nothing. Over nothing, all because they can't agree. It wasn't over money, it wasn't over drugs, it wasn't over anything. It was simply because they couldn't agree on something, because they couldn't get along. All because they couldn't not give in to the temptation of evil. My whole family right now don't talk to me because they're given into evil. I did nothing wrong to them. Nothing. They're being prideful and holding their hearts closed because they're judging. And their judgment is wrong. It's incorrect. It's false. It's evil. Period. And I know I'm not the only family, only person that's dealing with this right now as I speak. I know it because I know Margarita, my, my fiance, is dealing with this stuff. She deals with it every day. Her family does it. Why do you think she came to America and got away from her family? She wanted away from it. She's tired of it too. And I know you on the other side of the phone is tired of it as well. I know you are. And that's why you're watching my videos. But I'll go ahead and read this now, all right? So he finally read it. It says, it says, God answered him in the eye of the storm. It says, why do you confuse the issue? Why do you talk without knowing what you're talking about? Pull yourself together, Job. Up on your feet. Stand tall. I have some questions for you. I want some straight answers. Where were you when I created the earth? Tell me, since you know so much. Who decided on its size? Certainly, you'll know that. Who came up with the blueprints and the measurements? How was its foundations poured? And who set the cornerstone? While the morning stars sang in chorus, and all the angels shouted praise, and who took charge of the ocean when it gushed forth like a baby from the womb? That was me. I wrapped it in a soft clouds and tucked it, tucked it in safely at night. Then I made a playpen for it and said, stay here. This is your place. Your wild tantrums are confined to this place. And have you ever ordered morning? Get up, told Dawn. Get to work so you could seize earth like a blanket and shake out the wicked like cockroaches. The cover of darkness is snatched from the wicked. They're caught up in their very act. Have you ever gone to the true bottom of things? Explored the labyrinth caves of the deep ocean? Do you know the first thing about death? And do you have any idea how large this earth is? Speak up if you have even the beginning of an answer. Do you know where light comes from and where darkness lives? So you can take them by hand and lead them home when they get lost? Why, of course you know that. You've known them all your life, grown up in the same neighborhood with them. Have you ever traveled to where snow is made? Seen the vault where hail is stockpiled? The arsenals of hail and snow that I keep in readiness for times of trouble and battle and war? Can you find your way to where lightning is launched or to the place from which the wind blows? Oh, you cannot. Who do you suppose carves the canyons and, for, and downpours the rain and charts the route of the thunderstorms? It's me, God Almighty, that brings, that brings water to the unvisited fields, deserts to no one that no one has ever laid eyes on. It says, drench in the useless wastelands so they're carpeted with wild flowers and grass just for my, for my liking. And who do you think is the father of rain and dew, the mother of ice and frost? You don't know for a minute. Imagine these marvels of weather just happen. Do you? Oh, this stuff just didn't happen. God created it all. It says, can you reach the eye of the beautiful Pleiades sisters or distract Orion from his hunt? He's talking about the stars. That's what I said. All these galaxies are different universes, man. God clearly calls them different universes. Jesus clearly said that there's their mansions. There's there's other Earths, there's other universes, there's other worlds out there. There's one that God has already created for us. It's already there. It's been created. God is, takes us. God, we're going to be there. Whoever believes in Jesus will be there. It says, uh, 
Do you know the first thing about the sky's constellations and how they affect on the earth? Can you get the attention of the clouds and commission a shower of rain? Can you take charge of lightning bolts or have them report to your orders? Definitely not. And then it says, what do you have to say for yourself? Who do you think gave weather wisdom to the ibis and storm savvy to the rooster? Does anyone know enough to number all the clouds or tip over the rain barrels of heaven? When the earth is cracked and dry, the ground baked hard as a brick. Can you teach Can you teach the lioness to stalk her prey and satisfy the appetite of her cubs? And they crouch in their den, waiting hungrily in their cave. And who sets out f And who sets out food for the ravens when their young cry to God, fluttering about because they have no food? Do you know the month when mountain goats gave birth? Have you ever watched a doe bear her fawn? Do you know how many months she is pregnant? Do you know the season of her delivery when she crouches down and drops her offspring? Her young once flourish and are soon on their own. They leave and don't come back. Who do you think set the wild donkey free? Open the coral gates and let him go. I gave him the whole wilderness to Roman, the rolling plains and wide open places. He laughs at his city cousins who are harnessed and harried. He is oblivious to the cries of the teamsters. He grazes freely through the hills. Rub nibbling on anything that's green. Will the wild buffalo condescend to serve you, volunteer to spend the night in your barn? Can you imagine hitching your plow to a buffalo and getting him to till your fields? He's hugely strong, yes. The job over to him, you wouldn't for a minute depend on him, would you? To do what you said when you said it? Oh. The ostrich flaps her wings futilely. All those beautiful feathers, but useless. The ostrich cannot fly. She lays her eggs on the hard ground, leaves them there in the dirt, exposed to the weather, not caring that they might get stepped on and cracked or trampled by some wild animal. She's neglectant with her young, as if they weren't even hers. She cares nothing about anything. She wasn't created very smart, that's for sure. Wasn't given her share of a good sense. But when she runs, oh, how she runs, laughing, leaving horse and rider in the dust. Who do you think keeps those eggs saved? Make sure those eggs hatch. God, God makes sure those eggs hatch. The ostrich don't pay attention. The ostrich is gone. It says, are you the one who gave the horse his prowess and adorned him with a shimmering mane? Do you create him to prance proudly and strike terror with his royal snorts? He paws the ground fiercely, eager and spirited, then charges into the fray. He laughs at danger, fearless, doesn't shy away from the sword. The banging and clanging of quiver and lance doesn't faze him. He quivers with excitement at the trumpet blast, races off at a gallop. At the sound of the trumpet, he neighs mightily, smelling the excitement of battle from a long way off, catching the rolling thunder of war cries. Was it through you know how that the hawk learned to fly? Soaring effortlessly on thermal updrafts, did you command the eagle's flight? Surely not, and teach her to build her nest high in the heights, perfectly at home in the high cliff face, invulnerable on a pinnacle and grag. No, oh. from her perch she searches for prey, spies at it at a great distance. Her young gorge themselves on carrion wherever there's a road kill, you'll see her circling. God then confronted her job directly. Now what do you have to say for yourself? Are you going to haul me, the mighty one, into court and press charges? That's why I wanted to read it. Because I see this time and time again, man. People people are 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 they 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 blaspheme God. They 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 How could God be true of this and this and this? And it's funny because all their stuff they're saying is 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 stupid, is idiotic. All their comments had no thought into them. They were just blatantly just saying whatever they heard someone else say. Those people never took the chance to read, never took the chance to learn, never took the chance for themselves. Don't listen to those people. Those people won't do anything for you but get you in trouble. They hurt your soul. They affect your soul. They make it worse if you allow it. So, um, I'm, I'm hungry. I'm hungry, I'm thirsty. Um, yeah. So I'll go ahead and, uh, do the cards, even though I already shuffled. But I had it. Well, do the cards. We'll do one more. Um, so that's what I read last night, you know. 
it was, uh, I've read it many times, um, that whole book, um, read the Bible many, many, many times, and will be reading it many times, um, so, I recommend starting with the New Testament, um, if you're going to read the Bible, if you've never read in the Bible, have read, read in the Bible, read the Bible, um, I suggest starting with the New Testament, um, John, Luke, Matthew, Mark, the four, those are probably the best ones to start with, because without reading the New Testament and reading Jesus, it's kind of hard to understand the Old Testament, um, and you can't have the New Testament without the Old Testament either, so, um, you know, they both, they both play together, um, you know. The Old Testament is the Holy Spirit, God at work through all these people, through all this history, um, and all the fulfillment, like all these prophecies that were written over the span of all these years, God used all these people to prove that he's real by fulfilling these prophecies that these people are saying. And then Jesus was the, was the, the final, well, he isn't the final. He was, he was the complete Listen, he was, he was the, he's, he's complete, he's everything. He's the center of the universe. Without Jesus, there's nothing. Um, he completed, he completed Calvary. He, he, uh, God came down to earth in spirit and used Jesus, um, which he made Jesus, by the way. Um, he came down to Jesus in spirit, um, cause there was multiple things he had to do in order for this plan to work, um, which I'll be breaking it down as well as, uh, you know, um, I make these videos and do the more studying. Um, I already have, um, a lot of it done, but you know, he, he, he is the fulfillment of, of everything that was prophesied in the Bible. And, you know, the Bible does say that there's one more chapter to be written. Um, which I'm trying to figure out what that is, and I have a feeling I know what it is. Um, I've been asking him for it, so asking him for the answer, I mean. Which, this is why I'm doing these videos, because I believe I will be delivering the answer. So, cut. Jack of heart. I'm telling you, man. Listen. God talks to me through those cards. It's because I believe, I believe he talks to me through those cards. Therefore, he talks to me through those cards because I believe that he talks. If I believe that he can talk to me through those cards, my heart's open for him to come in. That's why belief is everything. God said, Jesus says, belief is everything. If you can't believe, there's no reason. You can believe in a lie or you, you know what I'm saying? Belief is everything. It's called a will, your heart, your will, you they broke it down. You can really, if you really want to get on the internet and start searching, you can learn all this stuff yourself. You know, you don't have to rely on me. Um, you know, God will teach you it. God will show you. Um, but we'll go ahead. So Jack, so a 10. Um, let's just read John 10 because I told you guys to go to uh, New Testament. John is probably my favorite um, when it comes to John was probably the most uh, critical, deep thinker um, when it comes to, like, philosophy and understanding, like, the scientific process of what Jesus did and what, you know, how God came down and used Jesus to accomplish, you know, the goal of, of salvation. Um, he really, really wrote it in a way for people to really truly understand what, you know, how it happened and, and what Jesus did. Um, Mark and Luke are definitely, all of them are good. Um, but to me, John is probably the most um, analytical. Um, I'd say, I'd say Mark, Mark is probably one of my favorite, uh, right to the point, you know, short, kind of, you know, just clear. Um, so it says Jack, Jack is a 10 in its heart. So the reason why I picked John too was, uh, John was Jesus's closest, uh, disciple. You know, they were, they were, 
they were like that. And Peter, too. Well, all of them, you know, all of them were. But, um, so I'll go ahead and read this. It says, uh, the title of the chapter is, He Calls His Sheep by Name. It says, let me set this before you as plainly as I can. If a person climbs over or through the fence of a sheep pen instead of going through the gate, you know he's up to no good. A sheep rustler. The shepherd walks right up to the gate. The gatekeeper opens the gate to him, and the sheep recognizes his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When the sheep recognizes his voice, oh, I'm sorry, it says, uh, let's, let me reread this. I'm my bad. I messed up. We all messed up. I'm going to reread this because this is bad. I was reading one. It says, he calls his sheep by name. Uh, chapter 10. Let me set this before you as plainly as I can. If a person climbs over or through the fence of a sheep pen instead of going through the gate, you know he's up to no good. A sheep rustler. The shepherd walks right up to the gate. The gatekeeper opens the gate to him, and the sheep recognizes his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he gets them all out, he leads them, and they follow because they are familiar with his voice. They won't follow a stranger's voice, but will scatter because they aren't used to the sound of it. Jesus told this simple story, but they had no idea what he was talking about. So he tried again. I'll be explicit then. I am the gate for the sheep. All those others are up to no good. Sheep stealers, every one of them. But the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. Anyone who goes through me and will be cared for, will freely go in and out and find pasture. A thief is only there to steal, to kill, and destroy. I came so they can have so they can have a real and eternal life, more and better life than they ever have dreamed of. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd puts the sheep before himself sacrifices himself if necessary. A hired man is not a real shepherd. A sheep, a sheep mean nothing to him. He sees a wolf come and runs for it, leaving the sheep to grab, uh, leaving the sheep to be ravaged and scattered by the wolf. He's only in it for the money. The sheep don't matter to him. I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and my own sheep know me in the same way. The father knows me and I know the father. I put the sheep before myself, sacrificing myself if necessary. You need to know that I have other sheep in addition to those in this pen. I need to gather and bring them too. They'll also recognize my voice. Then it will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I freely lay down my life, and so I am free to take it up again. No one takes it from me. I lay it down of my own free will. I have the right to lay it down. I also have the right to take it down, um, to take it up again. I receive this authority personally from my father. This kind of talk caused another to split in the Jewish ranks. A lot of them were saying he's a crazy, a maniac, out of his head completely. Why bother listening to this fool? But others weren't so sure. These aren't the words of a crazy man. Can a maniac open blind eyes? And it says, they were celebrating Hanukkah just, just then in Jerusalem. It was written, uh, no, it was in winter. Jesus was uh, strolling in the temple across Solomon's porch. The Jews circling him said, how long are you going to keep us guessing? If you're the Messiah, tell us straight out right now. Jesus answered, I told you, but you don't believe. Everything I have done has been authorized by my father. Actions that speak louder than words. You don't believe because you're not my sheep. My sheep recognize my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them real and eternal life. They are protected from the destroyer for good. No one can steal them from out of my hand. The father who put them under my care is so much greater than the destroyer and the thief. No one could ever get them away from him. I and the father are one heart and mind. Again, the Jews picked up rocks to throw at Jesus, and Jesus said, I have made a present to you from the Father of a great many good actions. For which of these acts do you stone me? The Jews said, We're not stoning you for anything good you did, but for what you said, this blasphemy of calling yourself God. Jesus said, I'm only quoting your inspired scriptures where God said, I tell you, you are gods. 
If God called your ancestor gods and scripture doesn't lie, why do you yell blasphemer, blasphemer at the unique one the Father consecrated and sent into the world just because I said I am the Son of God? If I don't do the things my Father does, well and good, don't believe me. But if I am doing them, put aside for a moment. <clears throat> it says, uh, put aside, oh, I'm sorry. If I do the things my Father does, well and good, don't believe me.